Hello and everybody and welcome back to another hey fun filled video. We are playing more killer frequency. I'm your host Bun Bun. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We are a radio host and um we've been saving people's lives from the whistle man who has not actually is a man who's been unaliving people. So let's do this. We just basically took a break per se for Peggy, so we're gonna That's start right. our You got it. Magic. We've got another call coming through too. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, It's caller? been a very long night, Congrats. by the way. It's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here, too. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number? Oh my god. Maybe something for the K Fam Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Oh, whoa. What? What? You knew George? Yeah, but not long. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. That's Ricky, why you got in a drink. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, listen, this is very important. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Everything about wait. I didn't Dawn. Before. What? I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she Bean? look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up. And saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like anyone deserved to die that night it should have been me what and it wasn't your fault Ricky it wasn't your fault you're not a bad person I know that now ma'am it took a long time to learn but yeah just thought I'd tell you all what I know thank you Ricky this helps thank you you got it ma'am Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh! Night, Ricky. You're not gonna say night to the dog? All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. Wait, I don't want that one. What's up, Peggy? What? What? Peggy? You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? 
Find out for yourself on line one. What the hell? Why can't you just tell me? Better be God calling uh -huh. me. Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator. I hate you, Peggy. the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be here. Sara? We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sara? Oh, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until Ooh. now. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. It turns out somebody had cut the phone lines, and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. Nice. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Wait, I just, I just realized, were we walking as Clive in the very beginning? And, cause I remember the back alleyway. Oh my god. Alright, uh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right, trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live, now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say, things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Marty, this is saving. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. I'm stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Why does he sound the same? Jason Parker survived the whistling man. Uh. It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. I wasn't sure if I got the How achievement or not. <laughs> oh, well, you know. I've got a hole in my stomach. And there's a knife in my leg. But John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's so funny. <coughs> He's so funny. He's hilarious. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Uh, yep. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. 
God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. Roller Ricky. Roller Ricky. Is he, Ricky yeah. is he all right? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. Is she he told leaving? Us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. What? It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the No. Crowd. Decided to plan a party in the woods. Hazing a gentleman just needs to stop. Whistling man crashing. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Oh my god. Started an almighty panic. Karma, how you're now actually stabbed. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? Uh... How do we get it back on? I don't, uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location... Oh, my God. ...so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. What? The storage area was locked. I'm sure it's fine. 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 She said the basement, didn't she? <sighs> Far back corner. Why is this station so big? That's not the far back corner. Wait, what is that? Oh, crap, I can't see. Oh no, I'm trapped back here. Oh no. I literally can't. Okay, I did it. Far back corner. Far back corner. Far back corner. Far back corner. Far back. Oh, what was that? Far back corner. That's not the general. That must be it. Boom! We, we got, got power. power. 
Uh oh. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Oh god, was there a thing over here? There wasn't. Oh no. How am I gonna warn Peggy? Oh my god, what if I die? I'm not scared, dude. Oh. Oh my god, she's walking around. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, and I'm trapped. I'm sure it's fine, right? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <gasps> oh! What was that? Oh no. Piggy, 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 piggy. Piggy, piggy, piggy. <gasps> the door's not open. Oh no. No, no, no. Peggy, where'd you go? <gasps> oh, you. Oh, damn it. <laughs> This can't be happening. Hi. Uh, what the hell? Hi. Hi. A, a call. Um, hello. Uh, where, where's, where's Peggy? Peggy gone? Have some patience, Forrest. It's okay. Almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. Okay. It's not over just yet. Well, where's Peggy? Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well, huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. Who is that breathing? The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch. Let me go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows. Oh my god, that's funny. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if you crawled out of his coffin with all the money. Oh my god. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. What? And he says where that is. Well. He knows how to get it. Uh, then who's here? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Oh, hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, that's you nice. Like He's just shy. He's just shy. Of course. That's how you explains think. how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Yup. And 
That's how you escape the secret archives in the newspaper office. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Who's Mooney? Teddy. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. Yeah, Delta but talking. I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You. Ah! Oh. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment. Damn. Before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay. Um, I'll do okay, it. Marie. I have to I'll keep her busy while the cops Good. come in. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Damn, she's beating the hell out of him, huh? Oh. I said you speak when you're spoken to. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. I mean, try. That's why I want you to interview us. Okay, uh, I can do that. Interview you. All right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> <laughs> Whippers. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Oh my God. Do you want to die? Die, Teddy, because if you don't start talking. <coughs> God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Uh. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass Who's it up. Who's Mooney? I was just surprised. No one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes. Oh my god, she's in here too. with this consistent noise. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. Ugh. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Okay. He wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life, so I helped him keep himself together. You... you were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was 
was in on it too. I know he was. No, he wasn't. Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, he didn't. Ricky didn't know. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... Oh my god. It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It He's still guilty! Prank. Uh, yeah, you could have. <laughs> just a How prank. you still say it was just a prank? Literally, oh, someone on. died. I... Oh! God! Damn it. You mean George think Jason had been murdered? He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Oh my god. He's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. And got him professional help just in time. Good sense to die earlier. What? Regret that. Enough about him. He and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Brook, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. Uh oh. And then I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me, I scream, and he starts laughing. I'm here. Uh, yeah, who was it? Who was it, Marie? Who was the whistling man? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Uh huh. Chuck. Brody. Look at you trying to blow up at the gas station. Laughing away. Wow. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. It was just a prank. George fell off whistling point. Uh, how do you know? How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the whistling man, too. And Oh my god, how many of you were dressed up? up? I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. Uh-oh. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. Uh-oh. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Well, maybe we don't dress up. Oh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After yeah, then why the cover up? If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I like bread. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then. I don't think you're going to be anything. What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened, but it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Wah. I should have left for my future. George was at. Hold on. Uh, the music's now too uh, loud. Okay. That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with me. What? Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... 
Teddy, mm -mm. did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek. Not she has her own coffee pot in here? Oh, uh, answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Read that. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. He said George was drinking. Just got himself into trouble. And I saw. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, saving. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. Oh, uh, you've been through hell. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. Oh, birthday card. You've got no idea. Never should have started. You shouldn't have pushed my door down the cliff. You should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. What? Was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. The winning throw. Ha! Ah, go away. Uh. Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway. No, don't look at me! I think that about wraps up the interview. Oh, Teddy survived, damn it! So. Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. How'd Peggy get there? Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. Wait, what? I'm worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god! I thought you. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own. Oh sister. my god! What? This is a card from her! What's happening? The card from the killer! Wanna explain, Peggy? Oh. Well, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... You should have said! Something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They don't need to stay quiet. They only care when they've learned that I've been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. 
What? What? Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Uh, Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night, too. They got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... You're gonna go after the child. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Rip. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, oh. She kept it here on her desk. Oh, I just what card. The card you made me for my. Oh. <laughs> what does it say then? Wait, you have to say. Oh, okay. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love M. I. Well, I. Wow, this is the most action in this game ever. Pursuit of the suspect. Hands is the police. Freeze. Wait, me? Forrest. Leslie, how's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Sara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. I guess I don't need this. I was just going to keep it for myself and my Where's stack Marie? of garbage back there. She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm locked in! Go check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest Nash. Uh, it's been a scream. And it's been a scream. Ha <laughs> ha. Am I free now? Oh, nice. Where's Nash survive the- Oh, I survived! Reach the end. Save all the Whistling Man Target! Ow, that's loud. We did it! We beat the game! Ah, it's so loud. Well, that's been Killer Frequency. That was a blast. To skip- Uh-oh. Oh, hold on. I want to uh, turn down the music volume again. Okay, back. Yes. It's still really loud. What else is going to happen? You've got this feeling. you got this feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's cure frequency. I can feel my heartbeat and it's bursting now. I drink that. Damn. You thought there was gonna be more things. The epilogue. Wow, so loud. What else is gonna happen? Are you guys going to catch her? I also thought the buttons underneath my little studio thingy was going to be uh, like uh, panic buttons, but I was wrong. Also, why is there like black mold everywhere? I mean, I guess there is drainage all over the place. There's leaks everywhere, but still, clean up the damn water masses. She's gonna jump off, isn't she? She's going to jump off. And the sad thing is, they probably won't even have a body. Da 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 da. Let's see if we're right or not. Is this song quieter? Stop! 
Okay. Murray's not even on here. Dang. I called it. I called it. I told you she was going to jump. I called it. I called it. I called it. Nope. Negative. Yep, she's still on the loose. Yup. Is that it? Is that it? Hello? I don't want to skip the epilogue though. Let's go, let's go. This is killing me. Straight up just killing me. Made with FMOD Studio, nice. I don't know what that means. That was it, huh? Cool. Anyways, that's been Killer Frequency. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for clicking on this video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. This game was fun. I hate the little random silly little jump scares they did in it, though. You know, that, that's about it. Uh, I do eventually want to play it to where everybody possibly not lives. Like, everybody just not. They all kind of done the deads. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And have a wonderful day. Be safe out there, everybody. Bye.